All right, today we are going to talk about the CPU queue and affinity. Let's do part one first, which is the CPU queue. Now you know that your SQL Server box, the hardware, will have a limited amount of processors. It might have like eight processors, 16, 32, 64, 128, so on and so forth. Now let's say your box has 64 processors. But at any given point in time, you get that feeling that SQL Server is actually executing hundreds and thousands of threads. Now with just th 32 or 64 processors, how is, it, how is it like possible to run so many threads at the same time? Well, all those hundreds and thousands of threads are not running at the same time. It's that feeling you and I get because the processor does the context switching very, very fast, extremely fast. So each CPU has a queue. So let's say your box has 64 CPUs. Now they are going to be numbered CPU ID from 0 to 61. And each CPU will have a queue. So the threads are queued up in this queue. And SQL Server follows this FIFO model, which is first in, first out. At any given point in time, there's only one thread running and the others are waiting in what we call as the runnable queue. The term is runnable queue and they're called as runnable tasks, which means they are ready to run. They have all the resources that they want. It's just that they are waiting for their turn on the CPU. So the thread that is currently running will complete its quantum and then go back and line up in the queue again. Yeah, we'll go back at the last, at the end of the queue, and then of course, wait for its turn to come again. And all that happens very, very fast, extremely fast. So let's go and see some of these things in action. I am in Management Studio. Let's type a very simple select statement here, which is select start from sys dot dm underscore os underscore schedulers so this is a dynamic management view and the processors are i mean the official terminology here is called as scheduler S scheduler is that virtual cpu let's go and execute this and you will observe that each scheduler has a scheduler address and then you have the CPU ID, which is what I was referring to. So you can see on my box here right now on this mini laptop, there are eight cores, right? Eight processors. So you have, sorry, I'm using these terms interchangeably like scheduler, CPU, cores. That's a different story altogether. So let's just focus on processors. So we have like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to seven. And you will observe that their status is visible online, which means all of them are visible to the SQL Server engine because right now we are running in the default affinity. I'll talk about affinity a little later. Um, in simple words, SQL Server is by default configured to use all the processors that are available on the hardware. Your immediate question is going to be, what are all these? Well, some other time. In short, our focus is the ones that are shown as visible online here. This one is for dedicated administrator connection. In one of my previous videos, I talked about DAC, which is a mechanism inside SQL Server. Um, let's say the SQL Server is unstable and you know things are becoming unresponsive and you want to get inside SQL Server and do a lot of diagnostic stuff, you can use DAC. So, in simple terms, think about this scheduler as a kind of a virtual CPU, which has some resources reserved for DAC. And likewise, you will see a few more, which says like hidden online. They're all CPU cycles, let's say reserved for background threads. When you have SQL Server under extreme pressure, you might have the user threads being, um, you know, uh, suffering because of that, but you certainly do not want the background threads to suffer. Uh, you know, threads on which the SQL Server stability is dependent. Let's say lazy writer or resource monitor or the checkpoint process. I mean, those things should remain unaffected uh, irrespective of the stress SQL Server is currently under. Yeah, so, you know, what we could do here is just simply to be more clear, we can just say we, where 
status uh, is equal to and I can just kind of copy this as visible online here and filter on just the visible CPU. So these are the ones that we are focused on, uh, you know, uh, talking about. You have the CPU ID 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 7. So those are eight processors. Now, a lot of metadata, a lot of low level information out here. Let's straight away jump to something what we call as the runnable task count. Now, this is a very quiescent SQL server, no activity whatsoever. So you can see the runnable task counts is all zero for our CPUs. Now, what I should be doing here is just to make this output a little more intuitive and easy for us to follow. Why not just get these two columns first and then, of course, the rest of the stuff if you are in interested in uh, observing those. So you have the CPU ID um, all 0, 1 to 7 and runnable task count as all 0, which means there are no threads running right now. There's nothing in the runnable queue. Now let's create some load. Let's create some threads and you will observe that uh, those threads are running and of course only one thread at a time can run and the remaining are waiting in the runnable queue or you could see here um, uh, visible, uh, you could see them as visible here in the runnable task count. Let's do that. So what I will do is go to the workload here and as always I am using RML utility. So I'm going to call add users.cmd which in turn will call ostress exe. That command line utility is going to call client workload which is going to run a select statement in a loop and how many threads am I calling? Let's just click on edit to show you that I am calling 100 threads. So 100 threads are kind of going to be distributed across eight processors okay so it's time for action let's do that i double click on this it's running let's go back here and now let's go and run this and what you are going to see that those hundred threads of course eight of them are running and remaining you could see are kind of equally distributed across all the eight processors so you could see 11 12 13 um, that's kind of equal distribution. Of course, you can't have like equally divisible, so to say. And if you keep running this again, you could just see some numbers changing. Like you can see 12, 9, 10, 11. You know, those numbers are not static or permanent. They keep fluctuating. Okay, this is how it is. Now, so that's your runnable queue. That is where all those tasks are uh, called as runnable tasks. So they get their turn and then they, they complete their quantum. We talked about quantum, right? So what's the quantum? So if I scroll all the way right here, uh, okay, here is the quantum, 4,000 milli microseconds, sorry. 4,000 microseconds is the quantum, which is four milliseconds. So once a thread completes four milliseconds, it will voluntarily leave the CPU and go and line up at the end of the queue, like what we call as cooperative multitasking okay so what we see here was and and that's why coming back to this original discussion i was talking about how you get that feel that oh my mini laptop my box just has eight processors but it seems like all hundred threads are running in parallel and none of them are like pausing or stopping but they're just continuously running because it's just happening so fast and that is why we use we kind of kind of you can look into this context switches which I'm not really focusing on here but yeah context switches will jump over every time you run it will like increase by thousands because that is what is like switching the thread from one thread to the other all right now let's talk about affinity here so while they are running or shall I stop them let's just stop them okay I can just close it Okay, now I have closed the workload. So let's go and execute this and you can see runnable task counts are all back to zero, right? Silent SQL Server. Now let's go into part two and talk about affinity. So if you go into the properties of the instance here, jump over to the processors tab, you can see that currently the setting that is the default configuration is, <coughs> sorry, automatically set processor affinity mask for all processors, which is use all processors by default for the SQL Server engine. And what I'm going to do is expand here, NUMA node zero, by default SQL Server is always under a NUMA 
configuration. NUMA stands for non-uniform memory access or memory architecture, but that discussion is out of scope in this video some other day. And NUMA Node 0 has all your CPU, CPU 0 to 7. So what I'm going to do is uncheck this automatic setting and set SQL Server Engine to run for 0, 1, 2, and 3. Only the first four CPUs, okay? This is what we are doing. Let's click on OK. And now when I execute this, you will observe that instead of eight rows, now we have four. So which means only four CPUs, 0, 1, 2, and 3, what we configured earlier, are now visible, are now visible to the engine. The remaining four are hidden. Which means what? Which means that now when you run those hundred threads, they're going to be equally distributed in between these four CPUs. And just to kind of make it clear, now I'm going to not, I, I, I won't run, uh, I won't put this filter where status is equal to visible online. Let's just cl click on execute. And you're all zero here, including the other hidden ones. But now you keep an eye on the first four. Let's go and run the threads again. So we are stressing SQL Server with 100 threads. Let's go and execute this. Yay, and see what you're seeing now. You are seeing that those approximately 100 threads <clears throat> are equally distributed between the first four CPUs that are now affinized to the SQL Server EXE, the engine, and remaining are all zero. So, I mean, they're of course not in use. And that's why you see the numbers also jumping, right? They were all like 11, 12, 13 earlier, and now they are like 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And you keep executing this again, and you will see the runnable task count keep keeps changing, okay? So let's go and stop this workload. And let's go and set this back to normal before I forget. And then I, I will be wondering what's going on. Okay. And you are setting this back to the default. And just to verify visible online, now all eight are visible again. So this is all about like threading, um, schedulers, CPUs, the CPU queue, the runnable tasks, and effortization. Hope you enjoyed the video. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the red SQL Maestros and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.